This is part five of the Mopar ammeter to voltage meter conversion. All right, I've, I have hammered that piece flat and it will be somewhere around here. I cut that one here and I got to cut a little bit of an angle on this one. Probably something like that. That's a little bit towards the bottom there. That should give me enough to rivet this piece on here. I'll give that a shot. So for in order me to get the proper positioning, I'm going to have to actually assemble this piece here. Actually, I should have done this one first. And this one goes on top. Like so. There's two of these speed nuts. Attach it to the board on the back. Gonna snug them up. Not crazy tight, I don't want to put much torque on it. That looks like that's kind of where it's gonna be. I notice there's a piece of insulation that goes in between there. It skipped off a little bit there. When I take it apart again, I will start to... Sh uh, let's see. See that right there? That little piece is sitting out. I'll take it apart again and make sure that it's good. But overall, it's kind of where it's going to be. It's sitting in there pretty decently. So now, I flip that around. All right, I see a bit of a problem. That is pretty close. I'm gonna hollow that out a little bit. I don't quite like that. So I'm going to, yeah, I'm definitely going to haul that out a bit so there's a little more clearance so it doesn't short out to the case. So I'll do that. Just a bit of a preview before I hollow out that one piece. That's how it's going to mount. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some washers that are bigger than that black piece to go around it and then my nuts will be on top of that. So I'm gonna rivet this in two places here and I think that should work. Okay, as I get ready to measure my holes, I got my, I think that'll, I'm just gonna put a small piece of tape here just to hold it in place so it doesn't move around when I, Got it upside down here. Okay, so you can see where I, I ground out that little bit there so there's no clearance, or there is zero clearance problems here now.
that still works good so actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a couple holes and then I'm gonna mark it then I can drill the case all right I've drilled my holes and one thing I was gonna mention in here because of the weight it's hanging a little bit so my holes actually are kind of centered so I probably didn't even need to carve that out a little bit but so I'm pushing on the bottom a bit and then I noticed kind of drilled one hole right on the edge so I said I don't want to play with that so I'm, I put another one in here so just for future reference I have my two pencil marks lined up and I'm going to mark my holes that's kind of sloppy I think I'm going to do one at a time then rivet it or uh, put something in it and then do the other hole just so they perfectly line up as a matter of fact you know what I'll do I'll do this put my center punch in okay I'm going to do that hole first All right I've drilled my hole Now just to hold it in place, I'm going to put that rivet in, and I'm a little off my center here. Let's see how it affected my... Hmm. I'm not terribly happy with that. I mean, it's a big sixteenth off. But I don't know if I can do too much about it. Still not going to be a problem. I think what I will do, I'm going to pull that out. And I'm just going to make that hole just a little bit bigger so it can go this way. All right, let's give that a shot. Okay, what I had done, this hole here, I made it oval a little bit, just a little bit. And then I did the same to this. And how I did it, these are called side boring bits. So when you push it in there and drill on the side, it'll kind of act like a file. It just did it a little bit help a little bit for the being a little bit out of center there we go it only made a little bit of a difference but enough that I'm happy so we'll go with that now I'll mark my second hole here I'm pulling a little bit be able to put my and I will drill that out all right I have the uh, riveted that bracket mounting bracket to the case here so now it's just a matter of getting my nuts on here or my washers so we'll set that up Okay, I have finished that. I was going to put bigger washers and go around that, but it turns out that wouldn't have been a good idea because then I would have been touching to ground here. So I just used the rigid, uh, the uh, washers and the bolts or the nuts that came with these the set here. Kind of 
just give them a little bit of a tighten. Not, not over blue face torque, but whatever I could get with my fingers. And now that is mounted solid. So, that is what it looks like on the, on the uh, outside here now. I guess quickly I can grab my cover here. That's what it's going to look like. And quite honestly, would you be able to tell? And I know, it's, oops, get the glare out of the way. I mean, honestly, Discharging and charging alternator is some of your condition of your alternator, even though it's voltage instead of current now, but what's the difference? It's, it's, it is giving you your your alternator condition, so I'm pretty happy with how that's turned out. So uh, that's it for my video. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you uh, want to, like this and subscribe to my channel. We will talk to you later. Bye-bye. One little quick addendum to my little video here. This red micarta board came with the uh, meter and it fits around the black insulators. So I decided to put that on and then now any chance of, or, or there's less chance of shorting out to ground or whatever. So I think that works good. Plus I marked did the markings here. This is the positive side and this is the negative side. Whereas the old one had the red wire marked here, so that doesn't apply anymore. So, so that's how it works. Thanks. It's the end of part five. Stay tuned for part six.